After all this time, Call of Duty remains one of gaming's biggest yearly releases, a true juggernaut of a franchise. As a result of being around for such a long time, there are many complaints that have come up about recent games not really evolving in a meaningful enough way, recycling the same ideas from years past. But while blanketing the entire series with these complaints is unrealistic, some titles are worse off than others, they're not entirely without merit. While it comes to military first-person shooters, there's only so many ways you can dress up the gameplay and make it feel different. Especially when releasing a new game every single year for such a long time. There's plenty to be excited about in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, but there's plenty that has us legitimately concerned as well. Thankfully, the Black Ops Cold War beta has helped many Call of Duty players discover issues for themselves and report them to Activision, in hopes of having them fixed in time for launch. Today, let's look at the five most prominent concerns, aside from SBMM, since that's more than obvious leading up to launch. Player visibility issues. This one might seem like a bit of a nitpick, but I assure you it isn't. Since the beta has been playable for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Call of Duty players have been noticing and raising concerns about odd visibility issues that seem to give advantages to campers and people who just want to manipulate the map to get ahead. Sometimes players hiding inside a building and thusly obscured by shadows would also be avoiding having their player tag show up on screen, causing them to be virtually invisible to everyone else while still being able to see their opponents perfectly well. In Cold War, some folks are taking advantage of this by standing in shadows or even inside shrubbery, neither obscuring their view but still getting the advantage of keeping themselves very difficult to see. This seems to be particularly prevalent in the cartel map, and it is something that hopefully Treyarch can iron out fast. This is the type of thing that, if unaddressed, could definitely harm the community of the game long term. Overpowered Vehicles Another issue that's cropped up concerns is vehicles. Essentially, they're strong, like really strong, to the point of feeling kind of overpowered. Of course, the reward for commandeering either of these is having some advantage over those on foot, but vehicles feel overtuned in this regard, locking down areas and matches with ease. Whether the solution is to bring down a vehicle's overall hit points, limit the fire rate, reduce explosive splash damage, or something else is up to the developer. For a mode like Fireteam Dirty Bomb, which features such a large play space and encourages quickly traversing between areas, vehicles can be downright oppressive. Hopefully this gets addressed sooner rather than later, especially if Fireteam Dirty Bomb is meant to have any long-term engagement. Flinch Removal Flinch is a bit of a mainstay in first-person shooters, particularly in Call of Duty games, and though this system is providing realistic feedback, even for a split second while aiming, it isn't handled perfectly. The alternative, which is to remove flinch entirely, hasn't gone down well. Removing those little moments of somebody losing their aim while being shot now allows weapons like sniper rifles to dominate. Want to run around and easily body someone in one or two shots without any risk of losing your aim, even when being pelted by assault rifle bullets? Say hello to snipers in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This also affects semi-auto rifles, offering advantages to these weapons over submachine guns and shotguns, which give up range for more damage up close, though SMGs are a whole other problem in that regard. How you feel about the changes to flinch will largely depend on how you feel about snipers as a whole. If foregoing flinch altogether, it makes sense to have other penalties for snipers to even things out, like slower ADS time, weapon sway, or reduced damage on body shots. Either way, snipers need to be looked at before launch. Lack of score streak alerts. You would think being alerted when certain score streaks are available would be a given. After all, this is a Call of Duty game where score streaks can be fairly common. But Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is currently not doing as much as previous entries to alert players when large score streak attacks are incoming, especially artillery strikes, which one could get on without proper alerts. It just means little to no time to react to powerful game-changing score streaks. Whichever way you look at it, alerts need to show up properly and offer some kind of counterplay. Funky Aim Assist what used to be a fairly reliable mainstay of the Call of Duty franchise is becoming one of its biggest annoyances. 
namely the inconsistent aim assist. Complaints about aim assist in Black Ops Cold War have been pretty varied. Some feel it's too generous, to the point of being able to compete with a controller against keyboard and mouse users on PC, while others feel it actually hinders their aim. The reliability of the system is being called into question, and given the fast-paced nature of Call of Duty's multiplayer compared to other games, having a consistent aim assist system is important, not just to maintain balance, but also to ensure that gunplay feels right. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you'll be notified when new videos go up.